I'm a horseman, so I understand a lot about horses. So when I was writing it, I was also thinking how I'm going to do it, you know. So it, it's uh, in the end, the manuscript was very accurate. I, I even I, I went so far that I thought every sentence was one shot. And uh, so in a way, I edited the film in, in the manuscript in that sense. And, and the breaking down of it and how I was going to do it was, uh, was a, an essence uh, method of how I wrote it. Now, when you say you're a horse person, does that mean you you know horses uh, in terms of riding and also yeah, I caring, maintenance? Yeah, I that? became fascinated like 10 years old of horses. It was a mystery because I am from downtown Reykjavik. And then I was, you know, I was sent to the farm uh, to work in the north part of Iceland. It was tradition to send uh, teenagers as a harvest boys, you know. And there I came really infected by this, you know, this virus, the horse virus, in a way. And it it became uh, my passion in my and my my second passion in, in my life. Uh, and I've been horseman since, and I've helped horses. I have five horses today, and. And in Iceland, it's not so uh, expensive to have horses. It's the common man's hobby, and um, so um, so it's a it's a lifestyle that I have chosen me, you know. So I I'm I'm into it, and I'm I also and I've read a little bit about it. There is you have also fabulous horse whispers here in America. So it's you know it's part of my passion this horse thing. But of course, the film is uh, about people. It's uh, film about the human nature and, and this coexistence of these two animals. So, but, but this, um, this set, people living with horses, I thought it's a beautiful uh, premise to, to reveal something about human nature. Now this kind of horse, I've never seen that kind before. Is that a special Icelandic breed or? Yes, the Icelandic horse just, you know, came to Iceland around 900 after Christ. And there has not been, uh, you know, imported horse in, uh, to Iceland for a thousand years. We know the last horse that was imported was around 1100, and it, it was a wallach. And he was, uh, he was uh, big, and he ate corn, and he was no good. Uh, but, you know, the horses came with the people, you know, we are, we are boat people, we are refugees from Europe that were fleeing tyranny, and... Um, and, uh, but soon uh, we, um, we deforest the island and we lost our ability to build ships or, or knowledge and, or somehow the Norwegian had the monopoly of, of, of transport to Iceland but we kept the horses. The horses became, you know, the ship of the island and, and the horse culture is maybe the, the only thing that we have still left from this uh, settlement culture. So it's a very Icelandic in a sense. It's very... And it's, um, it's, uh, it's very old, and it's, you know, how you treat horses, how you think about horses, the, all this culture about horses. And, you know, I've got yeah. to get away from the horses in a sec, but I'm still fascinated by these two sequences. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're getting a lot of questions about how you got the, the horse to mount yeah. the other horse while the rider was on, and then the swimming horse. If you could just talk a little bit about those two sequences. Well, it's very easy. It happens all the time. Uh, it has happened to me once, nearly. I, I was on a mare that was, you know, on her right time in her cycle, and there was a stallion there, and and I had narrow ex escape. And I have known no man that, that has had this humility, humiliating experience. and. Uh, and this is also a story that has happened, you know, and um, so, and that is all about the, the cycle of the mare. If she is in the right cycle, she gives some pheromones and nothing can stop the stallion, you know, and it's maybe part of a day, you know, in her cycle. So it was all about to have her on the right time, you know, and it was one take and six cameras and the actor just did it, you know. And he felt a little bit awkward. He was he felt like he was in a bed with two people and he should not be there. <laughs> it was the same experience. Wait a so you're just saying you just timed it perfectly, or was there ba was there some kind of like hormones in there? Yeah, no. We, we you just calculate. Uh, you see when when she is last. Um, so we you examine the mare for a while, so you can start to calculate her circle, and then you, you then you know. And we had two mares extra on the side. Uh -huh. If she was not right, we could, you know, come with extras in, in, in the same color. 
So it was, you know, that was the main stress. I was more worried about this than anything else, you know. <laughs> uh, and um, and then the swimming is also a thing. Most of Icelandic horses are good swimmers, and they ha have to be, uh, because you know it's our transport through rivers and sometimes over small fjords. And uh, this is also known: the men swimming out to a ship and you know buying cognac of a French connoisseur or something. So. Um, uh, but he swam there for like three minutes uh, in the sea, and uh, you know it's not so hard for the horse to swim with the man because the man is swimming with him. He's just dragging the man in the water. Ah. Uh, so it's you know. You know I didn't think about that. No. So yeah, because all he has to do is just hold, hold him, and then he swims with his legs. And uh, oh. I thought he was yeah okay. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Now was that a sequence? The same thing with just one take, six cameras? Yeah, we did it in uh, two parts, yeah, in a way. We we had it, uh, we divided the, with the ship and, and without the ship. And, uh, and but we got, we had uh, more takes. We could go uh, many times. It was close-ups and then the wide shots and so on. But it was for the real, for example, we had this accident when the horse fell there between the ship and the horse. and. And this was just the one take thing. That was when the horse swam to the boat and to this rig. And the horse trainer that had trained the horse, he, he said, we, we have only one chance. And we said, why, do you th why do, don't you think he can do it? Or he said, well, this horse, he will probably do it the first time, but he will not do it again, you know, to take the, the rig there, you know. So, so we, so he went there. The, he was like a stuntman. We dressed him up like the actor. So he swam and we took him from the back, swimming to the boat, just the last meters going up. Then he went up, and the actor came, and we continued the scene. And the actor, actor went on 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 back of the horse, and then this accident happened. And um, at that time, this actor had never swam with a horse before. You know, he may be for two meters somewhere. So he was just, you know, there and we just jumped, we just shouted at him, jump, jump. So he really jumped there for the, for, for the first time and, and swam ashore, sure, 100, 100 meters. And then everybody rushed to the horse to think if everything is okay with the horse. And nobody cared about the actor. He was not nearly drowning there, you know, exhausted, you know. <laughs> So we, we found out that, you know, we maybe should also have human actors, you know, human doctors, doctors for humans, but not only for horses. And you also had the Russian crew members. Yes. They reacted perfectly. Yes. Uh, it's the guys that I picked up there from the harbor. They were yeah. just guys from Estonia that sp spoke a little Russian and were working there, and I just hired them the day before. <laughs> well, that, those were two well, fantastic sequences. There. Well, I mean, they were just brilliant parts of the film. So about the... Um, the, the, the story itself, you've decided to mm. go with many stories yeah. uh, put together with one theme. I love this kind of storytelling in films, you know. I, I think it's, it gives a great perspective and a, a distance that the audience can see the, the broader perspective, the, the, you know, the third meaning, you know. And it's not sucked in or hypnotized by the protocol in story, you know. So in, the, in that way, it's very practiced, it's fair fremdung. I, li I like this kind of storytelling, mosaic, you know, and, and great films have been made like this, you know, both European and American, you know, Pasolini do does a lot of films like this, and, and it's part of mi middle, also pa part of a literature, the storytelling literature of telling many stories. And then we have, of course, you know, shortcuts like Robert Altman or, or Magnolia, it's the same, you know, same thing. So I hope I will do more films like this. And the, uh, for the human actors, uh, it seemed like a lot of them were non-professional, but maybe I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, there, were, there are only two, you can call, unprofessional actors of the main actors there. Uh, it's uh, Juan Camillo, the Colombi he's from Colombia, but he has a little experience. I worked with him in the theater. And uh, then it's the young Swedish girl, so that is in fact an Icelandic girl, you know, and, and she's my niece, so she got the role, it's just a nepotism. No, I needed a real uh, horse girl, and a very young girl, and, and, I, I, because, and, and that's the premise also for casting the actors, they had to be real horse people. I, I, I did not want to fake that, you know, 
So uh, that was very important. So that to get a role in this film, you had to have some knowledge of horses and be a and good what about writer. The, uh, the castration was that a real horse doctor? Yeah, they, no, that, that's an act, actress. That's that, that are actors, but of course they were. Uh, you know, it's a close-up. It's a you know, it's a cutting. You when when the needle goes into the horse, you know, it's a it's a doctor that is it's the hand oh, of a doctor, okay. and then you cut to the face of an actor. It's oh. the old trick. You had one wide shot where the horse had its. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, uh, everything testing, and, but we cut away before she cuts anything, you know, it's oh, just, okay. we just, you know, he opens up, you know, his, he just, we just show the, the close-up of his testicles, and, uh, um, I got it, uh, movie magic, movie magic, <laughs> no animal was hurt in the making of the film, it's absolutely true, you know, absolutely, yeah. and it's important, I because we, we could not do it, we are all horse lovers and horse owners, and, but of course this film is also about abusement of horses, you know, how human abuse horses, or nature, or, you know, try to conquer nature, so, so that is the, the, you know, the essence, the mission of the film, to, sh sh to show this dangerous animal, the, hum the homo sapiens, you know. So, <coughs> so um, but, but we, had to t we took very good care of that, you know. Now I was reading the press no. notes that um, you, were, you were having problems, you know, finding a producer for the film or getting no. it made. Can you talk a little bit about the Yeah, the, 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 the only guy that believed in me, and, and, and so this was Friedrich Thor Friedrichsson. It is our greatest uh, Icelandic filmmakers, filmmaker, and uh, he's of course an artist, number one, two, and three, and, and then he's a great producer, and, and stood by me and made this possible. And it was not easy, I was a newcomer, it was, was my first film, the manuscript was just 42 pages, and you know, difficult scenes with horses that nobody believed was possible to do. So uh, you had to have a brave producer to, to make this film, and, and he was the man for the job. And what kind of cameras were you using? Alexa from R. And that was all as line that you rented the cameras for that? Hollywood guys were shooting in Iceland this summer, 2012. They had taken all the equipment and all the crews. Is that Walter Mitty? It was Walter Mitty, it was Tom Cruise with Oblivion, it was also uh, Russell Crowe and, and Darren Aronofsky uh, oh, with okay. Noah. Three films, one summer, competing with me, you know, and I had less than one percent. I didn't even get the snow that I needed. I needed some extra artificial snow, but Tom Cruise had ordered all the snow in Iceland. So I got nothing with but cart cartoffel, you know, powder, and, you know.